Hello, wonderful person. This is Anton, and this is me trying to build yet another system of stability using as many Earths as I can try to squeeze in the same orbit. In today's video, we're going to discover a new paper I just recently found that kind of talks about um, an investigation where you can read and find out about how many planets you can actually place around the same orbit for it to be really stable. Anyway, welcome to What the Math. <laughs> So in one of the previous videos, I uh, investigated the number of Earths you could place in the same orbit for it to be stable and survive for several billions of years. And the number was 42. We were able to squeeze in 42 Earths uh, in the same orbit and they actually orbited really nicely. But this was based on a, a research that was actually from back from um, 2009. Then I started looking around and I found another research paper, a much newer, much more uh, robust and a research paper from um, one of the universities I actually attended myself, University of Toronto. So I figured I'm going to take a look at it because it's actually relatively recent. And the paper is actually uh, from March of 2017 called The Stability of Tightly Packed Evenly Spaced Systems of Earth Mass Planets Orbiting a Sun-like Star. Now, the idea is really simple. Basically, the entire paper focuses on using mathematics and various types of analysis to, and, of course, simulations to try to discover how many Earths and for how long can you actually place in the same orbit and basically how stable would the system be. Now, in the paper, there is actually quite a lot of graphs and quite a lot of really interesting um, topics covered. They also mentioned several other papers that basically lead them to this conclusion. And I do recommend that you read this by yourself if you actually are into reading scientific papers, but the idea is kind of right here. Now, this number represents the so-called Hill Sphere. Um, and this is the range of Hill Spheres. The, uh, this right here, uh, the percentage of survival of the system after a certain number of orbits. So this is in basically hundreds of millions, and this is billions, and this is tens of billions years, or orbits in this case. And this is how many systems they actually have simulated. Now, let me actually start by uh, briefly defining what a hill sphere is with this Wikipedia picture right here. Um, hill sphere is this circle that you see. This is basically Earth and the sort of area, or in this case, sphere of influence uh, of Earth's gravity. So anything inside the hill sphere will start orbiting around Earth. Anything outside will start orbiting the star or the sun in this case. Uh, this particular value, the Hill sphere, depends on the distance between the objects, the mass of this object, and the mass of this object. For Earth, this distance is approximately 1.5 million kilometers, or about 1% of one astronomical unit, 1% of the distance of Earth to the Sun. So, uh, the Hill sphere in this particular paper is defined as this uh, value delta. And what this kind of tells you is that at a hill sphere distance of 8.4 to 13, there is about 18% chance that the system will be stable after about approximately 10 billion orbits. In other words, 10 billion years. That's actually a pretty uh, interesting finding. Um, there is about 47% chance for that system to be stable after 1 billion years, and uh, after 100 million years, about 80% chance. So what is interesting is their actual conclusion. They basically discovered that at 8.6 uh, times the hill sphere, there's a very high chance for uh, these planets to actually survive for several billion years. In other words, if I were to place um, Earths separated by 8.6 hill sphere distances, I would be able to create a very stable system, which means that we could potentially create a, a system that's even more than 42 Earths. Now, okay, let's do some math and find out how many Earths can we actually place, and then try to simulate this in Universe Sandbox. So, first of all, what is 8.6 uh, Hill Spheres? So, if one Hill Sphere is about 0 0.01 astronomical units, then 8.6 is about uh, 0 0.086 astronomical units. If there is about 6.28 astronomical units at a single orbit, this implies that we can potentially place about 73 Earths uh, in the same orbit and have a relatively stable system. So, okay, 73 is an odd number, so maybe just maybe this wouldn't work very well. But uh, let's let's just try. Let's try to place 73 um, basically Earth-like objects in the orbit around um, a Sun-like object. 
and see if it works and if it stays stable. So how are we going to do this? Well, the easiest way I found this to, uh, to basically do is to place a Jupiter here, give this Jupiter exactly 73 masses of Earth, and just bear with me, I'll explain to you why I'm doing it this way, because now if you actually go into the uh, adding rings um, thingy majiggy, you can essentially click these two buttons and change the number of bodies to 73. So what this will do is it will divide the total mass of this object by 73 and place um, 73 of those objects in the specific orbit that you were about to specify. In other words, we're about to place 73 masses of Earth in a very, very equally spread orbit at one astronomical unit uh, with the, that we're doing right here um, in a, not a random, ordered formation around the central Jupiter. So as soon as I click add ring, boom, look at that, 73 objects. Now these are moons because that's how the game simulates them, but notice how each of them has a mass of about 73, uh, no, sorry, not 73, one mass of Earth. Now we need to still change our Jupiter. We have to now turn it into a sun. It has to be a, st a stellar mass object. And um, I'm also going to change its temperature and uh, might as well rename it. Let's call it sun. And finally, we're missing one more thing. These objects are currently moving too slow. Their actual orbital velocity is below the orbital velocity of Earth. So to um, remedy this, we're, we're going to click uh, this button, more, and then click on auto orbit. This should have given every single object a speed of about 29.8 kilometers per second. And that's what we need. So here comes the moment of truth. We're going to run the simulation. And if everything is projected correctly, mathematically speaking, and if everything is created uh, relatively correctly as well, we should have a really stable, almost perfectly stable system with 73 objects orbiting around the central object, the sun, with basically a potential survival rate of, what was it again? Approximately 76% uh, of 100 million years and 35% of about a billion years and only 3% of about 10 billion years. So um, that's not too bad. That means that if humanity ever reaches a stage where we can actually modify planets and stars and basically move ourselves into a kind of a, a new phase of um, creation where we can turn any star system into anything we want, we could potentially basically create a 73 habitable um, planetary system in the same location as our own Earth, out of wherever material we find. So, in other words, I'm just going to do this with one of them. What we can do, what we can do is this: we can actually, let's we'll just add some uh, atmosphere here, change the surface pressure to make it one atmosphere. Uh, we'll change the materials, giving it some water, not so much, too much water. Too much water is not a good thing. A little bit less water. A little bit less than that. Okay, here we go. That's that's better. And uh, obviously, obviously, we'll need to add things like uh, magnetosphere as well. But this is good enough. Look, see how we have liquid water and comfortable temperature of no, not so comfortable. 105 degrees Celsius. That's a little bit too much. Uh, why is it so high? Okay, that's much better. 27 degrees Celsius. So here we go. Uh, we can have basically uh, 73 of these in pretty much the same orbit as our own Earth, and each one of them can be a potential home for the new human race. So instead of having one Earth, you have 73 to choose from. And maybe these will be basically classified on uh, in terms of numbers or in terms of their vertical location as, it, as they are in this case. Now this actual, um, this vertical parameter here is completely random. I don't really know why it keeps adding this because technically they should be in the same plane of orbit. But I think it probably has something to do with the fact that this particular object is not really orbiting completely flat either. So it added these, um, I guess you can call them asteroids and these, these moons around it uh, with a vertical parameter as well. But anyway, so um, just to test this, if this is stable enough, let's run this for like, I don't know, a few hundred years. And what we're going to observe now is whether the orbits here start wobbling. If you see a wobbling orbit, it means that something is unstable. Something is not really right correctly. 
Right now though, every single one of these orbits seems to be actually pretty stable. It's basically a circle that doesn't seem to be changing shapes. Um, now, this game does have one little shortcoming and that's to do with the speed of simulations. If I increase the speed of simulation, you'll notice that this becomes red a little bit. That's because it starts actually acquiring errors um, in the speed of the various objects. And you can actually check this error by going into the tool, uh, sorry, not the toolbar, view bar, clicking on more, and right here it shows you the accuracy of the simulation. So right now we're at 99% accuracy. That's actually not high enough. If you wanted this to be a perfectly accurate simulation, it would have to be like 99.999999%. So this is not a perfect simulation here. If I increase this even more, the accuracy even drops higher. And you'll notice that things start wobbling, actually. They don't wobble because the system is unstable. They wobble because the game is actually creating errors here. And as you can see, this actually did create a few errors in, in the simulation. But um, overall, having run this several times, I can tell you that 73 objects actually does last for pretty much like forever. Not forever, but for as long as I ran the simulation. One of the simulations I ran where I actually left this overnight uh, for about nine hours. And when I came back, it was pretty much close to about uh, several million years. Uh, none of the orbits changed at all. They were actually just as circular and as perfect as they were before. And obviously none of the objects actually collided with each other, which is exactly what we want. We want to have a very stable system where every one of these planets orbits in a very orderly fashion around each other. And in this particular simulation, because of the errors in the game, we created a kind of a tunnel, orbiting tunnel. It looks pretty cool. So hopefully uh, through the mathematics we did in this video, you kind of now understand how we can find how many planets you can actually place in any orbit around any object. And in this particular case, you can actually place at least 73 Earths um, around our sun in the same position as our Earth and have them survive there for at least a billion years with about 50% chance. Um, or a much higher chance if it's only 100 million years. Now for it to survive several billion years, it has to be actually, they have to be much farther apart. And 42 is still the number for that, as, a, as I did in the previous video. But for shorter times, 73 is actually not too bad. Well, anyway. Come back tomorrow to learn something else and we're gonna stop this here because I just wanted to kind of show you how high we can take this number before things start falling apart. In the next video, we're going to take a look at uh, some other planets and maybe place a few of them in the orbit as well and find out a few other things about this particular idea of placing planets around the same orbit. See you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.